Uh, Shalom, everybody. Hey, uh, hey, Shalom. All right. Shalom, Allah, Yahweh. Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shai. Ba'ashim, Kakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Which is 100% true in the world. This is salutations to the hope of the uh, This is Dr. Yaramada. Uh, you know, uh, today. Today is one of them days where I'm up against a bunch of Hispanic family members that want to ruin everything. You know, they ain't got nothing else better to do. Uh, as you can see, it's it's a pretty bad, uh, pretty bad cloudy day. So I chose this place here today to try to, um, you know, try to, uh, you know, put the Lord's preaching in. Uh, these are some of the new signs that I got, you know, you know, to try to get uh, spark interest in the Lord, you know. Okay. Um, John 8, 44. Okay. He saw his Edom, right? You are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, right? And abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8, 44. Genesis 36, 8 and 9. Esau is Edom. From the beginning, okay. From the beginning, if I can get this damn, okay, let me quit panorizing it. All right. From the beginning, there is only one group of people that have been killing and taking what does not belong to them. Right? Then I got, you know, the Jacob and Esau. I just got that made uh, last week. And then they put a strike on my channel, so I couldn't do nothing last week. You know, that's what these bastards do, man. Anything to stop the truth, you know what I mean? Okay, got that out here. And then, I, of course, going down the line. Right? These are all different signs I got out here for the people, you know, so it's this way they could uh, start asking questions, you know, and, uh, you know, so it's this way I could try to get some of them out of the way. You know what I mean? I'll try to, anyways. Right? So, but anyway, I'm going to get started. highlighting it, but uh, I think I, I'm going to highlight this one 
uh, like I did uh, from the last one, the original King James Version, and then uh, I'm gonna get that 1611 I got, I had just, I had bought, and uh, I'm gonna start highlighting uh, a lot of uh, key scriptures in there as well, right? Anyways, about the shop, about the shop, about the shop, so my, as a writer, to uh, the collapse of the dollar and Jacob's trouble, right? And uh, I, 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 I'm going to have to uh, Yeah, it's uh, on 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and 2nd Ezra chapter 15, I'm going to have to skip because, uh, you know what I mean, I ain't got my, I, I don't have, I, I left my pocket full of everything in there. So, um, damn, I should have, I should have brought the, the, the spare 1611 instead, but I was, I was trying to get out here and try to get, and try to get the preaching going. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I'm, I'm using a bar, uh, my, my son-in-law's car, you know, because I, they, nothing else I can do. I mean, my car's in the shop. I can't, you know what I mean? I can't do nothing. But anyway, I'll start off with uh, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, chapter chapter two, verse one through three. Let me see if I can. I'll just do that. Do that. Right. Habakkuk, chapter two. So I can. Chapter two, verse one. I will stand. I will stand at my watch and set myself on the, on the ramparts and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am correct him. Right? Now look, now remember. Okay, this is... <laughs> okay, I mean, hey, I, I'm, okay, I live in Wichita, Kansas and everybody here is staunch, I love Jesus bullshit, okay? I'm the only one here that believes the way I believe. So, as Elder Yashawamba was trying to explain, uh, or explaining in the video I'd seen the other day about uh, beware of persecution and, uh, and defamation of character of, of the prophets coming. So, uh, you know, he was explaining about uh, bigotry and all that type of stuff like that. I didn't get a chance to write it down because I was taking my notes at work and it was time for me to go, so I didn't get a chance to finish. But but anyway, Habakkuk chapter two verse one. I will stand in my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Verse two. Then the Lord answered me and said, you know, because this is the new, uh, the new King James version, right? So. I'm starting to see more and more homeless people out here. They ain't got nothing else better to do. 
uh, more and more Hispanic people that, you know, I mean, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, uh, the Most High God, Yahweh, before he left the earth, uh, in the form of his son, Yahweh Shah, Mashiach, he said that uh, we would be, uh, that we would always have the poor in the meeting with us forever, right? And the poor in the meeting are starting to become more and more prevalent as far as uh, the homeless are concerned. So at least we understand where, uh, where you where you where you have with the um, what do you call it the not not only the great tribulation but the great multitude is found in uh, Revelation chapter chapter seven verse nine, also in Second Ezra uh, chapter two verse forty two uh, through forty six, right, and it, and it explains you know the great multitude who they are Revelation chapter twelve. Yeah, verse 7 to 9, you get a great book to do And so it explains to y'all. But, I mean, it's... Okay. <laughs> hey, really nothing I can do, man. They're just gonna... They're gonna... This is what they're gonna do. It don't matter, right? Because they, you know, that's what they're gonna do, man. Okay. That's how the people... That's the people. That's the people for you. Nothing I can do. But anyway, uh... Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and then the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run that read it that reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak and it will not lie right so these are the biblical prophecies you know in the new King James version of the Bible okay because this is just a spare book uh, a spare a spare I usually read out of the King James Version, but the point still of uh, the fact of the matter uh, remains is that the biblical prophecies are still coming to pass. No matter what Esau, even the so-called white man, the devil the Bible speaks of, comes up with. Okay, he's trying to do everything he can to offset the prophecies of the biblical scriptures because the prophecies state that his kingdom is going to fall. Okay, and you know, this is a selfish white man. Okay. And everybody know how selfish and evil these people are as a race. So they don't want to lose what they have. And if you try to take anything from an Edomite, they're going to kill you and hang your ass from a tree. Okay? That's just what they do, man. Right now, they're still hanging people from a tree. Okay? And get this. The Edomite devils, these savage Neanderthals, they actually have the unmitigated fucking audacity, right, to put uh, uh, black, uh, what is it, um, what they call so-called uh, black identity extremists, individuals that have um, certain biblical views, right, and, and, and certain uh, uh, substantial uh, so-called religious beliefs and what they believe, and they refuse to step away or uh, or to move from what they believe. They're going to call us bigots and call us racists, uh, you know, any other uh, epiphany that they can come up with in order for them to pass unrighteous laws and decrees, like it says in Psalms 94 and 20, right, where they pass mischief by law. Okay, let's go over there to Psalms and just get that one right quick. Okay. Yeah, because I ain't used this book in a long time. I, I didn't think I needed to, you know what I mean? Let's go down here to Psalm 94. Uh oh, what's it called? Right. Psalms 94 20. Shall the throne of iniquity which devises evil by uh, uh, selection. Right. Shall the throne of iniquity which devises evil by law have fellowship with you? Right? New King James Version. Right? And no, they're not going to get any fellowship with us. These Edomite devils are not going to go into the kingdom of heaven on earth where our bodies will be changed from mortal to immortality and where we become an actual extraterrestrials. Okay, right now we're terrestrial, but we will become extraterrestrial when we receive the spiritual power of the 144,000 by the great multitude where our bodies are changed from mortal to immortality, from corruption to incorruption, right? 
will be put into a new body. That's the only way you're going to be able to go into the kingdom of heaven, especially that's the only way you're going to be able to go into the presence of the Most High God in and out like the angels do and give worship to the Most High God in heaven, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah. That's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Okay? So the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, has sent his angels that would surround us and go around us and cohabitate with us in our homes, around our homes, protecting our homes, those of us that believe on the name of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah. Clearly, nobody else here believes it. They believe in Jesus Christ, a uh, gay homosexual superstar, like this picture uh, right here uh, shows you, right? Okay. Revelation 1 and 14. This, this proves that this is identity theft. These devils went throughout all the earth and changed the dark skin art of the original people of the Lord and put their faces up. See, I don't have my apartment before I can go into 1 Maccabees 3 and 46. Or, wait, a, wait a minute. It's, uh, yeah, 3, yeah, 3 and 40, uh, 43 and 46, something like that. Where uh, what they did was they went through and they always desired and sought to paint over our likenesses with their images. And they succeeded during the Renaissance period, the rebirth of the Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites. Rome 2.0, a.k.a. America, right? The land of indigenous holocaust and home of the slaves. See, this is what they don't teach you at church. They ain't going to teach these, uh, these Christians uh, the truth at church. If they did, they'd go home and commit suicide. Suicide would become an option for a white man. If things don't go his way, he just always commit suicide, go into the next life, and become a slave. Okay? <laughs> Okay, they don't have any options. They're out of options, man. If, now, I showed you the weather behind me. You see it's horrible back there, right? Okay. Uh, the, the rain hasn't come down, but the reason why I chose this tarp is because in case it does rain, like it did uh, on me, the other, the other video that I had put up, it started raining on me, raining on all my pictures. So I had to put them all in, inside up here on the thing. So uh, that was over there across the way. But, uh, you know, like I said before, I, I, I got to do something, man. I got to do something for the Lord. You know, I got to stand up for him. He said, who will stand up for me in the evil day? Okay, I will. No problem. Okay, just teach me what I should say, what I should do, and how I should fight, uh, fight these scoffers. Okay, and, and I'll win every time when I fail. Okay, all day long. Okay. I guess the so-called pastor of the church seen a homeless person over there. I guess they want to do the Christian chain and see if they can go and get him to stay, go stay with them. They don't know this guy. He's a homeless person. Anyway, let me show y'all. This is ridiculous, man. Which is cool. I mean, you know, but I'm going to show y'all what I'm talking about. Hold on. Let's go around here. See, look. That's them. You know. They're getting homeless people off the street, trying to find them somewhere to stay, somewhere to eat. You see him? Y'all see him over there? Yeah, that's the that's the pastor of the Christian church right there in the gray shirt. Teaching Jesus God loves everybody bullshit. You see how they dress? All of that shit, man. And all these people, they really think that they're just going to walk into the kingdom of heaven after what they've done to us, man. They really believe that shit. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But, I mean, okay. You think you're going to go into the kingdom of heaven with, with us and the children of Israel? You lost your fucking mind. You know? I, you know, because the Most High God ain't having that. See, that right now. But you can't tell these people nothing, man. You know what I mean? You can't tell these people nothing. Oh, no. They ain't going to believe you uh, even, even, if, even if you did. You see what I'm saying? So, but no, these people ain't going to go into the kingdom of heaven with us. If they do go into the kingdom of heaven, they're going in slaves, you know, because they tell you that, and, and uh, uh, yeah, it tells you that. In the book of Obadiah 1 and 18, and they hate hearing that. Every time I, I mention the book of Obadiah, 
These people, they actually want to fight, man. Okay. Uh, it was one dude, I was I was preaching the other, other week uh, about the, uh, the book of Obadiah. You know, I went into it, and uh, I was just preaching out there at the people. And he flipped me off, man. The other dude uh, drove by as soon as the campaign started, talking about there is no God, right? So, you know, you have a, a mixed conglomeration of unbelief, scoffing, mocking, and all of this shit. And it all, all pertains to these so-called white men, okay? And these bastards trying to frame mischief by law after they've changed the law, they, they've transgressed the law, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. And the everlasting covenants are with the Israelites and knowing our weakness to cause us to continue to commit sin, which is transgression of the law, we would always be at the bottom. They knew that when they started. So they brought us over here in chains and they enslaved the indigenous population of people that were already here and exterminated a vast majority of them through genocide and stole all their land. And the, and the individuals that were here signed peace agreements and treaties with these Edomite devils, right? And at the end of the day, the Edomites betrayed them anyway, man. Anyway? God damn! Okay? So, I mean, come on, man. These people can't be trusted at all. The Most High God is going to destroy these animals from off the face of the earth, man. On this side, yeah. By thermonuclear destruction, I see me of thermonuclear missiles. Right? Okay, have a good one. 2 verse 3. Oh, uh, uh, verse 2, so I can. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Okay? And Jacob's trouble and the great tribulation is not tarrying. Okay? But also the judgment of the Most High God, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shad, does not tarry as well. The, it's a, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the elite at the top, they're in a trick bag. Okay? If they come against the children of Israel, the Most High God comes and stops them. Biblical prophecy. That's the reason why they're trying to offset the prophecies. Right? Using incrementalism and gradualism. Okay? And incrementalism is gradually they're incrementally, by increments, slowly, 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 piece by piece, step by step, taking over the world and taking the, the rights, privileges, and civil liberties of every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. They're using incrementalism, step by step, day by day, hour by hour, always on the news, letting the people know, which is part of their witchcraft, okay, and their sorcery over the mind, Letting the people know this is what they're doing, okay? And nobody's fighting back. Everybody's in the mindset through, uh, you know, which they've succeeded with the 5G technology at, you know, getting the people, uh, you know, brain dead pretty much to where, you know, they don't even want to fight back. They don't even want to uh, do whatever it takes that may be necessary in order for them to receive salvation. They don't even want to do that. Okay? They just want to believe in Jesus and Jesus, uh, uh, well, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Jeebus Cross, this blonde haired, blue eyed Edomite, is going to save them, float down from heaven on a, on a chariot drawn by horses and save them and bring all the angels and every man, woman, and child that he's going to save which is everybody, and take them up in the clouds. Well, if he takes everybody and saves everybody on the fucking face of the earth, right, all nations, that can, they say that they can be saved through Christianity and Catholicism and Islam and Buddhism, right, all these other uh, false realities, false religions, right, there's nobody for the, for the Lord to destroy Right? The Christians are trying to go back and say uh, that 
Babylon has been destroyed. But what they're not understanding is that uh, from a spiritual aspect through the similitudes of what's going on, Babylon the Great that the book of Revelation speaks of is America. This is the place where you're spiritually enslaved, financially enslaved, socially enslaved, and they continue to take your civil liberties from you piece by piece until you have nothing left. You have to obey what their law, or they'll just put you in a fever camp. They'll put you in a concentration camp. They'll put you in a detention center. This is what's coming for the men of the Lord that stand up for the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashim Yahweh Shai, and stand up for the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, whom you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Right? Right here, where you have the face of the son of the Most High God, right? Who is a Negro from the tribe of Judah. Revelation 1 and 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like a fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Now, if you take a piece of fine brass and throw it in a furnace and pull it out an hour later, it's going to come out covered with soot. What color is soot? Right? See? Black. Okay? Now, that's a, that in itself is a, is a soliloquy or, or whatever concerning what skin color the son of the most high God would be when you saw him. Now, like I said before, they always sought to paint over our likenesses with their images. And Vladimir Putin, uh, the, uh, the premier of Russia, okay, he has a museum that's dedicated to the dark-skinned art, okay, because on any other continent that's uh, a democratic state, okay, of democracy, they took and, and, and covered up our likeness with their image. They whitewashed it. They took Egyptians based on the Ptolemaic Empire through, uh, through Ptolemy, Seleucus, and, uh, okay, which are two of the generals under, uh, after the death of Alexander the Great. Uh, when they took over Egypt, you see what I'm saying? That's based on the Edomites that took over Egypt at that time and enslaved the original Egyptians, right? And bred them out, right? Now, that's the reason that the Egyptians today are so light-skinned. They look like uh, light-skinned Arabs, right? Because Esau Edom rapes, murders, and pillages. For the devil cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what they do. They don't know how to create anything but death, destruction, the condition, and bring the conditions of hell and of death and cannot be satisfied. Okay? That's what these devils do, man. So our job is to come out and tell the people, who those of us that are uh, uh, of the people that are willing to listen, and tell them the truth of the biblical scriptures of what, what can be done. Wow, looking at the sun is trying to come out. Okay. I should, maybe I should have went on a different street corner. But I, I didn't know. You know, it looked pretty ominous today. And uh, if it clears up, praise ye the Lord. Okay. Uh, but you like I said before, I still got my lesson out. Tried to try to anyway. But anyway, Habakkuk chapter two, verse four. Behold the proud. Behold the proud. Who is most proud? Esau, even the so-called white man. They're proud to be American citizens. They they feel that they they've got the the strongest military force on the face of the earth. Well, all of the other nations have military forces just as strong as theirs. They have thermonuclear weapons too. So now what? Okay, it's an even playing field. Barack Obama just saw it to that. And it was all to bring uh, America, Babylon the Great, to its knees. It was done deliberately and on purpose. Okay? Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Right? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. So faith has a substance. It's an energy. Okay? Okay? It's hope. Okay? When we get down on our knees at night or during the daytime 
and we make supplications and get, uh, get on our knees at night before we go to bed and pray to the Lord, you know, we drum up that energy. We try to make a, a quiet, dark place for the children of Israel, those that, that believe on the names of Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shah, when we get on our knees, we ask the Lord for mercy. We pray for our families. We use the Lord's Prayer as, in, as was instructed us by the Son of God himself when he was here. Okay. Uh, you know, we recite the, uh, the Lord's Prayer in the Paleo Hebrew. Okay. Try to anyway. You know, I, I thought I had wrote it, uh, wrote it down in this book, but I guess I did. You know, I try to keep, I, I have all kinds of different, uh, different notebooks, you know, full of biblical scriptures. Because I, you know, because the brothers, uh, they, they put a whole new perspective, a whole new twist on the Bible that is different from these, these evangelical Christians. They come out and tell us a lie to our faces, telling us that uh, God loves everybody. When clearly he doesn't, because when the Son of God gets here, he's going to destroy a lot of things and a lot of people, okay? But evangelical Christianity pushes that God loves everybody. Everybody has a chance. All you have to do is believe in Cicero Borgia, this image that they set up, okay? All you have to do is believe in the white man, that he'll protect you, okay? Well, what I don't understand is that these evangelical Christians, okay, I-U-I-C, uh, ISUPK, Zabak, Sakari, how come they don't tell the people about the radio frequency identification micro silicon processor, the microprocessor, the silicon subdermal implant the size of a grain of rice that all of the countries are moving to as a digital token to access the central bank digital currency or to access the universal basic income that each country is going to set up to entice millions of, of people right to be a come of the to be a part of the cashless society right which is the image that they want to set up of cashless society and digital currency that's the image that they want to set up the image of the beast everybody has to become a global citizen global citizen three digit uh, barcode number this person's name is this this person's ID number is this, three digit barcode number, right? Okay, he works here, this is his address, this is his, his identification and the license of who he is. And then it gives you all the information of the, uh, the biometric, uh, uh, you know, biometric face, facial uh, features, and all of that stuff is in the cloud, but it's in a benign uh, microprocessing uh, see here that's located underneath the skin. Okay, so that's a clear. That's clearly telling you that the that the mark of the beast is here. That, uh, the evangelical Christian church is telling people that it's not here yet. You know that uh, what do they what do they call this, this individual? Uh, I forget what's his name. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 the Antichrist is what they teach on Sunday. You know that he's got one world leader is going to take over. And then they've got all of these left behind movies, which are bullshit. Okay, uh, talking about the different ways and how the Most High God is going to destroy these individuals. They are uh, left behind part two. They got. Uh, two old men out there blowing fire out of their mouth. Right? <laughs> Burning up all of these soldiers. Okay? I mean, see, they took, they take Greek mythology and they intermixed it with the biblical scriptures and they push Christianity on the people. And he's got, they've got everybody's mind uh, encompassed with this bullshit. Okay? The two individuals that are out there, the two olive trees and the two men that stand up for the Lord, okay, are the two nations found in Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 10. Okay, this is what they know. They don't teach you stuff like that, man. They just, they refuse. 
Okay. Okay. 35 verse 10. Because you have said these two nations. Okay. Now the two nations are the northern and southern tribe of the house of Israel. Right? Okay. They're the northern and southern tribes of the house of Israel. Okay. For example, the southern tribe. Okay. Let me give you an example. Right? Okay. The southern tribe of the house of Israel. So like here. Okay. Okay. You have the Negroes at the top. Okay, that's the southern tribe of the house of Israel that consists of uh, Benjamin, Judah, and the Levite priests. Right? And then you have the Latinos, which is of the northern tribe, and the native Indians, which is also of the northern tribe. So those are the two nations found in Ezekiel chapter 35. Okay, because after the death of King Solomon, right? After the death of King Solomon, the two nations had split under Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Rehoboam, I think, was the son of King Solomon, and Jeroboam was the general of King Solomon's armies. And Jeroboam <clears throat> went into the Assyrian captivity, right, uh, under uh, Sennacherib, and then under King Nebuchadnezzar, the southern tribe of the house of Israel, the Negroes, went into captivity. You know, remember the book of Daniel? King Nebuchadnezzar's dream? I'm going to give me another poster and put uh, uh, a statue of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream on one side. And on the other side, I'm going to have the difference between an Israelite and a Hamite. Okay, so you know the difference. You'll be able to see the difference. Okay. Anyway, Ezekiel chapter 30, 35, verse 10, because you have said these two nations and these two countries, which is the country of Azareth, a.k.a. America, and Israel, where the, those Khazarian imposters calling themselves Israeli currently reside in our homeland right today right so right because you have said you have two nations and, and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess them right through slavery and enslavement captivity right although the Lord was there as though the, the Lord was there right and how do they do that as though the Lord was there well They've always decided to set up our likeness with their images. So they covered up the face of the Son of the Most High God in heaven, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and put up the face of Cicero Borgia. Right? This guy. Okay? They put up this guy's face. Okay? This is the devil. Right? What it says. This image is not biblical. Which it's not. I just showed you what a biblical image of what the Son of the Most High God looks like as opposed to this travesty of justice that our, the Hispanic, Latinos, and Mexicans believe in and the Native American Indians. They were all forced to believe this against their will for hundreds of years before they brought us over here. Okay? And then they were, and those individuals that would not capitulate or bow down to the belief of these Edomite devils, they were exterminated. Children, right? Where it says in, uh, what is it, uh, Isaiah 26 and 20? Where they will no more cover uh, the slain of the children of Israel. Isaiah 26 
Verse 21, for behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. Okay? And it's coming out that through, uh, Roman, uh, through the, uh, the Catholic Church and Catholicism, they destroyed two-thirds of the indigenous population of people that were here. They destroyed two-thirds of the Latino people and spread them out over all over the earth. They're now they're uh, what, do you, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Brazilians, where they speak uh, what is that that Polynesian uh, language? Uh, damn, I forgot the name of it. I, I watch UFC all the time and, and, and I forgot the name of the language uh, they speak. Portuguese, right? And uh, you know you got them speaking that. You got them speaking Spanish. All of the Latinos speak Spanish. Then you got Ephraim which are the Puerto Ricans, you got them speaking an offshoot from the Spanish language, right? So one is perfect, one is imperfect, but they're still not the original language of those people. The original language of those people is Hebrew. Okay? And these devils hid that fact from us as, as a people, as a whole. Okay? They did that deliberately and on purpose. So this way we would not know who we are. We would always think that we're Hispanic, Latino, Mexicans, niggers, Indians, okay, which are racial pivots, okay, and do not pertain to us. These are just titles that these devils made up and forced us to believe it by force of the sword, okay? That's the history of these devils. And they want to walk into the kingdom of heaven thinking that Cicero Borgia is going to forgive them for their sin. If you knew the history on Cicero Borgia, you'd stop going to church. Boy, no, I'm telling you, I did. The person they ignorantly call uh, Jeeva's Cross is a Negro, not a white man. On the other side, I showed you what a picture of what he would look like by description of the Bible. Itself, the, the, the Holy Scriptures describes what he looks like. But everyone on the earth has accepted and follows behind the image of the white man because the, the, the white man is in control. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, where was I at? Uh, I was at Ezekiel 35, right? Right? And the reason why they did this is like this. Listen to this. Isaac, or yeah, Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 3. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, Mount Seir, the Most High God is not actually talking to a mountain for you fucking idiots out there, okay? Because you people are, are, are really getting on my nerves, okay, with stupidity, for real, okay? It's not talking about an actual mountain. It's talking about the people that dwell in the mountain. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Genesis 36 and 8 and 9, King James Version of the Bible, right? Thus Esau dwelt at Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Okay? And then it goes into the genealogy of Esau's children. The women he married. All of the children, his grandchildren, so on, so on, so on, so forth. Okay? Like it says, from the beginning, there's only one group of people. One. That have been killing and taking that what does not belong to them. Only one people. One group of people. One race of people that have done this. And that's the so-called white man. Okay, and everybody wants to say no, uh, they're not all bad, they're bullshit. Okay, if you take white supremacy, and if you take white privilege from these devils, they will eat you because there's nothing left to eat. Okay, they will hang your ass from a tree for fun. <coughs> they, <coughs> they did that to us along with the Latinos Okay, and the Irish, they did that also, they did that to uh, 
uh, to the uh, to the uh, what do you call them uh, the, to the Italians also okay they talk shit on the, on the so called white man but they look just like the white man these Italians because they're the most racist individuals on the face of the earth okay okay and then they got the they got all kind of madness going on okay and the hypocrisy of their belief system the way they were raised as opposed to when they come to America and everything is set up they have to follow in behind what the white man is doing right what sense does that make when these same self same white men hung your ancestors from trees just like they did the Negroes just like they did the Latinos okay but you join in with them because they look like you and they don't look like us what the hell? You're a hypocrite. So don't be sitting up talking about uh, how much you hate uh, cappers and niggers and all of this and, and beaters and calling us all these other racial pimpets like the so-called white man does. That makes you just as guilty as them. That makes you be subject to judgment and death by the hand of the Most High God and his angels when they get here, just like the so-called white man, the Edomites. Okay? Now, Going back to Mount Seir, Mount Seir is referring to the Edomite people that dwell at Mount Seir. Esau is Edom, right? Ezekiel chapter 35, verse three. And say to it, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against you. I will stretch out my hand against you and make you most desolate. When the Most High God stretches his hand out, against Esau, Edom, all of his kingdom is going to be exterminated, destroyed with thermonuclear heat, man. The Most High God destroyed the whole world for the same type of weaknesses, wickedness by water. He swore that uh, uh, on himself that he would not destroy the world with water, okay? And he made a pact betwixt himself and man with a rainbow. These Edomites took that peace, that peace agreement Okay, between the Most High God in heaven and man on earth, this rainbow, and, tur and turned it upside down and made it uh, a thing for the alphabet community. The men of a, of, a baser, of, a, of a lower and baser sort. Okay, individuals that violate and transgress the law of the Most High God. Because what, what did Esau Edom do when he first took over? He transgressed the law, changed the ordinance, and broke the everlasting covenant. What is the everlasting covenant? That everlasting covenant is the law, and that everlasting covenant was made with Israelites. Right? Like it says in Romans chapter 9, verse, uh, verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? So Israelites are the only ones that can go back and practice the ordinances and the law and and, and, and and place themselves under the need of the covenant through grace and mercy afforded them by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea, all that is therein in the foundations of water because he is the one that made this peace agreement, this love contract, this marriage with the Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants, there you go. And the giving of the law, the Most High God gave the law, statutes and commandments to Israelites, no other nation. So the only people that can be saved are Israelites, no other nation. Okay? The Most High God chose us, but we didn't choose him back. Therein lies the conundrum. As long as we continue to sin, which is transgression of the law, the Most High God will estrange his face from us, turn his back on us, and turn his face away from us. That's the reason why the Negroes, the Latinos, Mexicans, and Native Indians are at the bottom. We live on reservations, we live in the barrio, and in the hood.
killing each other, shooting each other, and selling drugs to one another. Who brought the guns and bullets and drugs into our neighborhoods, into our reservations, into the barrios? The white man! And because he knows that as long as the children of Israel continue to sin, he has complete autonomy, complete autonomy of the entire world and control of it. Okay? That's the facts. And this is what they're not teaching you at church. They don't teach you the church, uh, the truth. They don't teach you about what's going on because it's detrimental to what they're trying to teach, that God loves everybody. No, he doesn't. The Most High God loves Israelites. He made that peace agreement, that peace back, and had us sign a covenant with him under Mount Sinai by his prophet Moses, who was also an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. They make a movie about that and put it on TV every year. Okay? What the hell, man? But the, the individuals that are portrayed in that movie are Edomites. Okay, it's based on the Ptolemaic dynasty when the Edomites went into Egypt and took over that land. Remember, Esau Edom has three blessings, right? That his father, Isaac, the son of promise, the son of Abraham, friend to the Most High God, had given him. The fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven from above, and to live by the sword. The fatness of the earth, the Grecian captivity, where they set up their they, uh, their ideological uh, ideological doctrine of self governance, right? Uh, with uh, what do they call it? Uh, the three the three uh, the three deals of government: executive, legislative, and judicial branches of government. They came up with the Senate and of representatives. Okay, the Grecian captivity, the Roman captivity. The dew of heaven from above. They rule with an iron fist. Every, every a nation that they went into war with, they captured them and expanded their army by indoctrinating those men that whose nations that they conquered into their army. Okay? And paid them wages to fight for Rome. Okay? That's how Rome expanded itself like a green bay tree all over the earth at that time. Okay? So they had the fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven from above. Okay? The fatness of the earth, the Roman Empire, the dew of heaven from above, you know, their uh, their, their program. As far as, uh, uh, you know, their government, their, 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 uh, their governmental uh, status. Okay? Then they live by the sword. The sword today are the thermonuclear missiles, right? By threat of thermonuclear war, they hold sway over every nation on the face of the earth. Every nation on the face of the earth is scared to death of America, right? And they allow them, through threat of nuclear war, to go into their countries and steal their natural resources. If they don't want to capitulate to democracy, they send uh, what do you call them, jackals, okay? These individuals, they go in and they negotiate with the leaders of their country. This is what America wants to do. This is what the European nations want to do in your country. If the leader of that country does not agree, they'll leave, they'll send an assassin to assassinate that leader by a uh, plane crash or a uh, uh, by drowning, uh, uh, assassination, right, and make it look like uh, make it look like uh, it was a coup in order to cover up the death of that leader. Okay, this is what America's been doing for what seventy five years now. Everybody's on to their bullshit. Okay, my job is to come out here and teach the gospel of the Holy Scriptures and make it make sense, which is totally different. From these Edomite devils that don't make sense. God loves everybody. That's a lie. The Most High God made the covenant with Israelites. And Israelites consist of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay, it's that simple. 
It can't get any simpler than that. Look. See that? See this? Okay. Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. These are Israelites. Okay? And this is what they don't teach you. They don't teach you stuff like that at church. Okay? So that's what we're out here doing is make everything make sense. The, uh, the, also, the mark of the beast, like it says in uh, the beast with seven heads and ten horns, it's NATO, the North Atlantic Trade Organization. The seven heads are the seven governments or kingdoms ruled by Esau. The red dragon is red because it says in Genesis 25 and 25, Esau Edom came out red all over like a hairy garment. Thus his name was called Esau. Esau means red, or, uh, or is it a representation of bloodshed? Okay, because that's all these people know how to do is rape, murder, and pillage. Okay, for example, is, can the camera come all the way over here? I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to turn it this way, y'all. Boom. Y'all see it? Okay, check this out. Genesis 25 and 21 through 26, the twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Okay. It has Jacob on one side. Okay. Father of the Israelites. And then it's got Esau, Edom, the so-called white man on the other side. See what I'm saying? Y'all see it? I think y'all see it. I don't know. Uh-oh. I moved trying to get that glare out of it, you know? Two nations separated at birth. Esau, Edom is the father of the Edomites. Jacob is the father of the Israelites, okay? Two nations separated at birth. Genesis 25 and 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Verse 26. Uh, Genesis 25, uh, uh, the verses 25 and 26. And after that, his brother came out. Now, why would they make a point like that, saying that his brother came out? Right? His brother looked like everybody else on the earth. Esau was the only aberration at the time. Okay? The first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that, his brother came out. And he took in his hand, his brother's hand, meaning Jacob's hand, took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. Right? And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Right? Because Rebekah was the mother of Esau and Jacob, the twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Okay? Now, 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. It. It's that simple, y'all. You see what I'm saying? Okay, and so that's what that's that's the thing. That's what we're out here to do. It's to teach. The gospel, the true truth, okay, the true truth of the Holy Scriptures to our people. The white man, this is his heaven. They got cars, chariots that, that drive by themselves. What the fuck? You can get out of an electric car and the car or, or park itself. What the fuck? Okay, you got uh, you got uh, also uh, you know all kinds of different stuff. You got all these buildings. Made from concrete, the vast majority of the people that put these stuff together are Hispanic, Mexicans, right? See, this is stuff that they don't teach you. They don't want, to, want you to know the truth, okay, of who you are as the children of Israel. They don't want that, okay? Esau even wants to just walk right on in the kingdom of heaven, right, and, and say, uh, the hope of our, of our fathers, you know, where is it? Uh, Jeremiah, where is it? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 40. Uh, let's 
49. Hold on. I think it's uh, 50. It's lucky. Is it 51? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, right? Right, okay, it was 51, it was 51 and 5, okay? For Israel is not forsaken, nor Judah by his God, the Lord of hosts, Jehovah by Shimei al-Mashai. They're not forsaken, okay? Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Okay, the hope of our fathers, right? Man, I, I, I need my glasses. I left everything in there. <laughs> you know, I left everything in the car at the shop, but it's all good. But yeah, and so that's, that's, that's the thing. That's the reason why I'm out here, man. You know, trying to do what I can to bring education to our people. Let the people, our people know that these Edomite devils are going to be destroyed here very soon. You know, this is their, their, their heaven. Their philosophy of democracy is religion, freedom of religion. That was the first mistake they made by giving people freedom of religion. The Israelites are not free to worship false gods. That was the first law that the Most High God set up, okay? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But freedom of religion allows pe our, our people to worship the gods of false religions. Statues that cannot see. They have lips, they can't talk. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have legs and arms and feet, but they cannot move. Right? They have ears, they can't hear anything. And they have statues. Okay? That's the reason why the Most High God says... Uh, in the scripture, uh, you know, that the gods of the nations are idols. Right? So freedom of religion was the first mistake. The second mistake was idolatry, along with, uh, you know, with worship of, of, of false idols, statues that cannot move, see, hear, nor walk. Right? Homosexuality, or uh, taking it back, so like it, I, I slip of the tongue because of YouTube uh, uh, government guidelines because YouTube is ran by the United States government now uh, okay uh, telling YouTube what they can and what they cannot do uh, that Mark Zuckerberg do okay signed a contract with the, the World Economic Forum you know to come against the truth and to put up uh, entertainment videos with uh, sexually explicit uh, and, and, and violence filled lyrics of rap music and sexually explicit videos of women uh, undulating uh, in a sexually explicit manner and from little kids little kids watch that shit every day man okay but men that are out here preaching the word of truth in spirit and in truth and the doctrine that the most high God had set up we're wrong how the hell does that work you see what I'm saying okay lies they push lies 24 hours a day 7 days a week Talking about uh, Ukraine is winning the war against Russia. I can't tell. Okay, a lot of them so-called Ukrainian soldiers are leaving the field. They're leaving. Fuck it. I'm going home. I'm not going to get blown apart by these Russians. Right? If the Ukrainians do win, how do we know that the United States uh, mainstream media isn't telling the people a lie? See? Adultery. Spiritual fornication, which ties back into freedom of religion and idolatry. Then you have physical adultery, where they push on the mainstream media platforms, Instagram, Messenger, Facebook, okay, of adultery, spiritual and physical adultery, where the Most High God said in his law 
that it is against his law for this to happen. And what would happen to you if, if, if you did commit adultery, right? You would be destroyed. But they pushed it and said, it's okay, it's, you can do whatever you want here in Babylon the Great. America, okay? America, the word Marika, okay, means bitterness in Latin. Marika, that's where they get the word from, the name. Uh, also, by Amerigo Vespucci, one of the first Edomites that came over here and enslaved the, uh, the, native, uh, the, the native Indians. Okay, hell, he came over here before Christopher Columbus did. You see what I'm saying? So the people were already accustomed and familiar with English and familiar with Spanish and familiar with Portuguese languages because of Marco Vespucci came over here first. Then, later on, uh, Christopher Columbus came over here with five Hebrew interpreters. Okay? Why do you need so many interpreters to, to interpret Hebrew if you're going to a strange land, a strange country? You knew, uh, Christopher Columbus knew, that Hebrew Israelites lived in this country from sea to shining sea. All the way up to Canada, to the Canadian border, to uh, Alaska and, and uh, Antarctica. Okay? All the way down to uh, the southern border of Central and South America. Okay? He knew that nobody here lived here but Israelites. That's the reason why he had so many different interpreters because he knew that there would be different tribes that speak different dialects of Hebrew, okay? When he came here and took this land from the people that were here, the reason why they're so light is because of constant rape, murder, and pillage of the indigenous population of people that were here. If the Indians people, if they didn't do what they were told, they were shot down and murdered, okay? If they didn't do what they were told, they were shipped to other countries, such as Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Argentina, El Salvador, from here. Okay, when they got there, they would be forced to in chains to build up those nations over there and to speak that language in order to communicate with the individuals that uh, that are forcing them to do these things against their will. Okay, it's right here on this board, man. Okay. If they didn't find enough gold or silver at a certain amount of time, if they didn't, they would have their hand chopped off. Or they would have their nose chopped off. Right? Or have their tongue cut out. Or have their rod cut off. Okay, that's the history of these Edomite devils for what they did to the indigenous population of people that were here. This is the white man's heaven, man. This is their philosophy, right? Covetousness, that's all they push here. Vanity and beauty, beauty products, makeup, jewelry, hair products to look more luxuriously uh, beautiful or more luring. Okay, what you're whoring out the people that live here. You're making them to be whores and sluts in the eyes of the Lord. Only a whore and a slut will wear as much makeup as these kids are doing nowadays. Okay, they sell themselves for money. Okay, but you, you get all of, this, all of this different stuff, man. That's what's happening, man. Okay, covetousness. Everybody wants what everybody else has got. And they're not satisfied with what they have at home. Which brings us back to adultery. You see how everything ties back into one another? Okay. Then you have murder. Okay. That's the uh, MO or the modus operandi of the Edomites. Murder. Rape. Pillage. Theft. That's what they do, man. What the fuck? If you if you don't, if you stand against them, they call you a bigot. America is spiritual Sodom and Egypt. It's spiritual 
because it's not the actual place of Sodom, it's not the actual place of Egypt, but the philosophies of Sodom and Egypt are being taught here and passed by law. That's the reason why it's spiritual Sodom and Egypt. That's the reason why it says that in the Bible. This book, okay? <laughs> All right? That's the reason why. Okay? The philosophies of those countries and those of those countries or whatever have you. <laughs> you know, a little rat just ran across over here, man. That's crazy, man. Okay? What the hell? Okay? I bet you if a bird see that rat, it's breakfast. Okay? But, uh, like I said, I ain't tripping. I'm just trying to tell y'all what's what I got these these signs up here for. Okay. It tells you to read Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 17 of the of the King James Version, 1611 King James Bible. Okay, and it tells you to read those. Uh, so this way you know who the beast is. Right? The two horns represent the common markets or the European economic community that were established in 1953. See, so I got this deal set up here and that three digit barcode is on this sign right here. See, see the up in the, up in the upper corner there, the three digit barcode, okay? And it tells you who the beast is these nations make up NATO, which is the beast. Okay? These are the countries that make up NATO. Greece, Italy, Spain, France, West Germany, United Kingdom, England, right? Portugal, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Canada, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Turkey, United States. Okay, Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. Okay, they've added some countries to that since then. Okay, some other countries have left and joined the BRICS nations. Right? Brazil, Russia, India, China, and Saudi Arabia. That's what BRICS means. Okay? So that's what's going on, man. And the beast countries are ran by none other than Esau Edom. He came out red all over like a hairy garment. Thus his name was called Esau. Then after that, his brother came out. So his brother Jacob looked like everybody else on the planet. Esau was the only one that didn't look like everybody else. Okay? So when the Most High God gave the law, statutes, and commandments to Moses to give to the Israelites, he gave them to the Israelites. He didn't give them to the Edomites, or else the Bible would have said so. Okay? He didn't give them uh, to, to the Hamites or the Canaanites, or else the Bible would have said so. He didn't give them to the Amorites or the Hivites or the Hittites, right? Or the Jebusites or the Perizzites, or else the Bible would have said so. See? He gave them to Israelites. He chose Israel through our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If I had if I had my my uh, my apocryphal book, I could go to uh, Ecclesiasticus, the book of Sirach, chapter forty four, and start at verse seventeen, and, and and break everything down and how the twelve tribes, which are, which are the, the the twelve the twelve the twelve sons of uh, of Jacob, right? 12 tribes of Israel, Judah are the Negroes, the West Indians are Benjamin, the Levites are, are the Haitians. See how they, they took us in, uh, through the transatlantic slave trade and moved us all around the earth and moved our landmarks? So it would cause confusion. Well, if you got an Ephraimite, right, over in the land of Zebulon, They'll think they're from Zebulon, but they're from Ephraim, right? 
Now, we all know that Joseph was one of the 12 sons of Jacob. Ephraim and Manasseh represent Joseph amongst the 12 tribes. Because after the death of Joseph, when he died in Egypt, that birthright that was Joseph's as of the 12 tribes were passed on to his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh came out first, but Ephraim had the promise of the leadership of the family of Joseph. Right? Manasseh, as the elder, was supposed to back him up. Manasseh are the Cubans. Ephraim are the Puerto Ricans. Okay? And they came out of Egypt along with the Dominicans, which are Simeon, Zebulon, which are the Guatemalans and Panamanians, Gad, the North American Indians, right? The Seminole Indians, which are Reuben, Naphtali, Argentina, Chile, Asher, Colombia, the Uruguayans, and Issachar, which are the Mexicans. Okay? We're the only people that the law pertains to. Like it says in Amos, Chapter 3, verse 1. Let me go over there right quick. Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. <coughs> so like you. Okay. Verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. What is iniquity? Sin added unto sin, added unto sin, unrepented of. If you don't repent, you're you adding a sin on top of another sin, on top of another sin, on top of another sin, which is iniquity. And the vast majority of our people are filled with iniquity of all different sorts and types. They get up in the morning, they eat. Bacon. Bacon is pork. Every nation on the face of the earth can eat that shit all day. Every other nation. The only nation that was not supposed to eat that stuff were the Israelites. Okay? We're the only nation that weren't supposed to. But everybody else can see it, which was the allure and the temptation of our people to sin. To be like the other nations instead of being the nation that was chosen by the Most High God above all nations upon the face of the earth. Okay? That was the deal. That the Most High God would choose us if we kept His commandments. And as long as we kept His commandments, no nation could defend us, could defend against us, they couldn't destroy us, and they couldn't win in any war, battle, or skirmish can't do it. It was impossible. You couldn't even come up behind him. The Holy Spirit would tell them where you're at before you had your planes together. They would just go and attack you and destroy you right away from all sides. You get all your armor ready because we were honorable people. We'll wait till you get a sword in your hand. We don't want to hack you to death. We'll give you a fighting chance. We're still going to kill you. Okay? It's that simple. Okay? Because the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, was our God. He's our power. Okay? He is our refuge in time of trouble. No one else's. So evangelical Christianity is telling you a goddamn lie to your face every Sunday. The vulnerable day of the sun, set up by the Catholic Church. Okay? Saying that you can be saved. If you're from a nation that is not of the 12 tribes of Israel, you cannot be saved. Good luck with that. Okay? Because the Most High God in heaven, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is the one that made that possible for us. Because he said, and I just read it, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. That includes the, all these families concerning the Edomites, the Amalekites, the Ishmaelites, of Gabal, of Tyree, of Sidon, which are the North and South Africans, right today, the Egyptians, the Philistines, 
which are the Palestinians, okay, and Amalek, which are those individuals, those are Khazarian uh, Amalekites that call themselves Jews, or uh, I take that back, I slip. Uh, 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 what what can I say to try to change that? Uh, Salakia, okay, that call themselves something that they're not, okay. The only way that you can be a person in reference to what they're calling themselves today in our land that they took over, okay, is you have to be from the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah consists of Judah, Benjamin, Lynn, Levi, priests that are Negroes, okay? So whenever you get done, that's the only way you can call yourself a J-E-W. That's the only way. That's where the word comes from. It's from Judah. Okay? They don't teach you that either. Okay, now, <clears throat> like I said before, let me go on, on from there to, uh, let's go on to there, from, to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 2. Right. Yep, uh, I told Elder, uh, Elder Yashawamba, Elder Manatasak, uh, Brother Yawan, uh, Brother Awan Hawad up there in North Carolina, uh, Brother Ashayar uh, 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 for, the, for the election up there at uh, GMS Precepts, All Precepts. Uh, I told them I was going to take notes. Well, I didn't actually tell them that, but I, I take notes in the spirit of their lessons because their lessons make sense. And if I can explain it and make it make sense to you, perhaps you might be saved. Perhaps you might get the opportunity if you're a Negro, Latino, a Native Indian, okay, or if your bloodline, through the bloodline and sea line of your fathers, go back to uh, a Negro, Latino, or Native American, or one of the 12 tribes of Israel, you might be saved. You may have an unction from the Holy One of Israel, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, and not even know it. So my job is to do what I can to enlighten you to the truth of what these devils have been worked so hard and spent billions, billions, do you understand me? Billions in the, uh, the word B, A, B, C, D, okay, billions of dollars for 75 years to hide this truth from our people. By telling them that they're Christians, pushing Christianity on our people, saying it's okay to eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. It's okay to eat uh, uh, boiled cockroaches, uh, uh, boiled scarab, octopus uh, tentacles. You know, which is ridiculous. Here you go, brother. Uh, okay, thank you. God bless you. Right. So. That's, that's the reason why we're out here, is to teach the truth. You see what I'm saying? Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 2. Thus speaks the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, the God of Israel, saying, write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. Verse 3. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel. And Judah, these two nations, these two countries shall be mine, saith the Lord. See what I mean? Like it says in Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 10, the two nations are Israel and Judah. Okay? So he's going to save us, the Israelites, that consist of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? That's it. Everybody else is fucked. Okay? If you don't go back by your bloodline, by the seed line of your father, your daddy, and his daddy, and his daddy's daddy's daddy, to an Israelite, you can't be saved. I'm going to see if I can shed a tear. Eh, eh. Well, my tear guts are dried up. I can't shed no tears for you. Because you devils went throughout all the earth, covered up all the dark skin art, and put up your face, your image, and said that you're us. So how the hell do you expect me to have any emotions for you? You think I care? You don't 
give a shit about us. You out here uh, uh, passing unrighteous laws and, and mischief by law, like it says in Psalms uh, 94 and 20, saying it's okay for two men to punch each other in the fudge. Okay, okay, it's okay for two women to grind at the wire. Right? Women. They make spread rock, make a wire, right? YMCA, whatever, all that old shit, right? Okay, they grinding at the wire. Come on, man, really? So the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, is coming to destroy this wicked philosophy of freedom of, of democracy, freedom to choose, freedom to do as thou wilt. That's what democracy does. It free, gives you freedom to do whatever you want to do. Okay, you got our little kids up here dressing and putting on makeup like they grown ass women. Putting that face out there on Instagram, eight but 12, 13 years old. Okay, trying to hurry up and grow up once they get there and have all these goddamn kids that wish they was a kid again. Okay, real talk. Okay, covetousness, vanity, lies, murder. That's what these devils push, man. They, from the beginning, they are the only group of people that have been killing and taking what does not belong to them. The Edomites, the so-called white man, the devil the Bible speaks of. It's the truth. Okay. Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 3. For behold, the days are coming says the Lord that I will bring back from captivity my people. So the Most High God has chosen a specific people that he's going to save. That he sent his son Yahweh Shah HaMashiach whom you call Jeba's cross. Okay. And covered up his face with the face of an Edomite devil like you. Okay. To shed his blood on a tree as a propitiation or as payment for the sins to cover us and keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord, giving us the opportunity and unction from the Holy One, giving us an opportunity to return. Because before him, we couldn't do it. Okay, it was impossible. You had the uncircumcised of the Israelites and you had the circumcised of the Israelites. Those that were circumcised were like the scribes and the Pharisees and individuals like Peter and Paul that were raised up in the customs of Israelite people. Right? That read the scrolls, the Bible. Right? Okay? And knew what right from wrong. Okay? The uncircumcised were those Israelites that had been scattered through the different captivities. Okay? And the different captivities consist of the Assyrian captivity, the Egyptian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the Roman captivity. Oh, I forgot the Grecian captivity, right? The Grecian captivity, uh, the Roman captivity, and the American captivity. Okay? All these different captivities or how our people became scattered throughout all of the world. So that's the reason why the children of Israel shall number as the sands of the sea. But only a remnant of them are going to be saved because only a remnant of our people are going to come back, learn the true name of the Most High God and His Son. Because like it says in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7, what is His name and what is His Son's name if thou canst tell? If you think the Most High God's name is Yahweh, you're lying to yourself because that is a Greek mistransliteration. That is a transliteration that has been misinterpreted by switching the English, uh, the, the languages from the Hebrew to the Greek to the English. The force of the name of what it means was lost in translation. Okay, this is what it, what it means in the Bible where it says, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High God. 2 Timothy chapter 5, verse 10. A workman that need not be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the words of truth. In other words, make it make sense. Okay? So that's what we're out here to do. Okay? We risk our life and our freedom to stand boldly before the face of these bastards that have afflicted us and that currently afflict us every day with white supremacy, white privilege, and entitlement. If you are an Israelite from the 12 tribes, you have to go to these goddamn Edomites and want them anything. If you want to own your own business, well, you have to rent a building that they own on property that they own, that they stole unrighteously from the indigenous population of people that were already here. And cover that up by mischief, by law. Okay, by putting bylaws and changing the law to their benefit. Okay, they must be getting every weight by any means necessary. They knew when they took power, okay, that they were going to lose that power to the Israelites one day. They knew it. So they set it all up to their benefit. That's where white privilege and white supremacy comes from, man. Okay, it was set up generations ago for the children that come after them would benefit from what they set up. Right? Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So they, it was these Amalekite Khazarians that call themselves something that they're not, but do lie, are afraid of us waking up to who we are, which we're doing right now. Okay? That shows, as part of biblical prophecy, that the children of Israel would wake up to who they are and call upon the name of the Lord, which is, this whole Bible is filled with that. Every time we went into one of these captivities that I had mentioned before, the Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the Grecian captivity, the, uh, the Roman captivity, and the American captivity, all these different captivities that we've been in, we would call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh the true Hebrew name of the Father and the name of the Son. And sincerity, ask him to help us. And he would come out of nowhere and destroy these nations from before our face, man, where we would give praise to the names of Yahweh and the name of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Okay? Real talk. Those are the true Hebrew names of the Father. What is his name? Yahweh which means he is, or he exists. What is his son's name, if thou canst tell? His name is Yahweh Shai, which means he is salvation. It's that simple, man. That's what Shai means, salvation in the Hebrew. What do you want? Okay? And then you get mad. These Edomites are mad and pissed off, so they're changing the laws. Uh, to destroy the ability of freedom of speech. So we can't use their uh, technological platforms that they push up all this folly and wickedness and covetousness and murder and adultery, okay, and false religion and lies where we put the truth out, they're trying to cover it up now. Okay? But the truth comes out the more and more you try to suppress the truth, the more it comes out, man. Okay? That's what the Edomites don't understand. The more and the more they try to suppress the truth, the more it comes out. What can we do? So what do they do? They try to exterminate the children of Israel by any means necessary. Okay? So they've got a plan called the King Alfred Plan. The King Alfred Plan during the times of civil unrest, national emergency, and, uh, and continuity of government calls for the rounding up of 21 
to 50 million black Hebrew Israelites and Latinos. They renamed the King Albert plan the Rex 84 plan, which is, means the Readiness Exercise Plan of 1984 that was revamped from the King Albert plan in 1984 by uh, President Ronald Reagan. Okay, it is still on the books today. If there is civil unrest in America, all the, the military forces will be enacted, right? Which is uh, 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 the National Guard. The National Guard, along with the military force, will be rounding up all Latinos, Mexicans, and Negroes and put them in fetal camps and concentration zones until the continuity of, of United States government is resumed. During which time, you have no rights as a human being. All rights and civil liberties have been stripped from you until such time as the continuity of the United States government has been set up. That's what they do. That's the King Albert plan. That's the readiness exercise plan of 1984. And that's what they're going to do to the children of Israel. Guaranteed all day long. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 4. Now these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and Judah, the two nations, the chosen people, the only people that the Most High God gives, gives, uh, cares about. The rest he don't give a shit about. They're just extras in a movie. The Most High God cares about the superstars of that movie. The movie is life. Okay? The actors in life, the antagonists are the Edomites, along with the Confederation of Nations, found in Psalm 83. Those that are confederate against the house of Jacob, the house of Judah, the house of Israel. They are confederate against us to keep us from our power, to keep us from our God and learning his name. Because once we learn his name, we call upon the true Hebrew name of the Most High God, not Yahweh, not Jehovah, okay, not Yahushua, not Yahuwah, okay, not Yah, but Yahweh, and Yahweh Shah. You call upon those names in the time of trouble, the Most High is going to send you an angel to protect you from bullets, change the circumstances to everything is at your benefit. And everyone else is going to die around you. Like it says in Psalm 91. As a matter of fact, let me go get Psalm 91. <laughs> that was a good one. Just came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, let's go get Psalm 91. Damn, I, I turned right to Psalm 83. Wow. Okay, well, let's go over to uh, this Confederation of Nations I was talking about. Okay. Psalm 83, verse 4. Oh, verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Okay? Verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. How do they do that? United Nations, World Economic Forum, World Health Organization, European Economic Community, EU, European Union, NATO, North Atlantic Trade Organization. That's how. Okay. They form a confederacy against you. Who is the living in part, the living embodiment or representation of the most high God in heaven on earth? The Israelites. That number is the sands of the sea that have been scattered through the four corners of the earth, through the transatlantic and sub-Saharan slave trades. Okay? That's who. Right? They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom, the Edomites, so-called white men, and the Ishmaelites, the Arabs, right? Dubai, all that, right? Moab, the Chinese, 
the Hagarenes, Egyptians. Remember, because Hagar was an Egyptian woman, okay, and Ishmael was her son by Abraham, right? So Hagar started Egypt when, uh, along with Ishmael. Now, there were other nations of people out there at that time that helped them out, called the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Amorites, the Gibeonites, the Midianites, okay? These are all the different nations of people that we conquered, okay? Remember Joshua and, and the, uh, the wall of Jericho? Okay, remember that? We conquered them too. We would never touch these people, but God told us to do it. And he would fight for us. So by the time we got there, they were scared to death. They had already heard about us crossing the Red Sea on dry ground. And when all of the Israelites were over to one side and the Egyptians tried to come in and try to destroy them, all of the water crashed in on the, on the Egyptians and drowned them all. And there was none left. None. So saith the Lord in the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay? So, since that's the case, all these nations were scared to death of us, man. Because we had an actual God that would actually do something. Right there on the spot. Boom! Shit. Yeah, they're scared to death. Today, they are scared to death. They are currently consulting with one consent all nations to keep us down in sin and iniquity, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, cocaine, heroin, speedballs, methamphetamine, anything, prostitution, adultery, gang banging, vanity, violation of the dietary law, eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, all of these things, we were not supposed to touch that shit, okay? But the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, had seen that we had committed sin, trying to be like the nations. See, our people are jealous because the Most High God is jealous. So when we saw the nations, they were eating all of this stuff they're not supposed to eat. They didn't die. How come we can't eat it? That's what caused us to sin. Right? You know, and that's what they're not trying to tell you. They ain't going to never tell you the truth. These Christians ain't never going to tell you the truth. You know, they're trying to walk into our, into our inheritance. Okay? The Most High God is coming back to save us because he chose Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of the Most High God and the promises. These things only go to Israelites, no one else. Esau, even the so-called white man, ain't got nothing coming. But an ass kicking from the Most High God. Yahweh is sending his son, Yahweh Shah and Mashiach, with a portion of his power to kick Esau in his ass for what he's done to his people and scattering them to the four corners of the earth. Removing their landmarks. Calling them niggers, beaters, fits, wetbacks, Uncle Tomahawks. What do these Edomite devils do? And talk about when they're at home, when Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are not around. What are they talking about? There's nothing else to talk about but you. If you're an Israelite of the 12 tribes, they're talking straight up shit on you for what you do, what they see you doing on mainstream media. That's what they do, man. They're wicked. They are the wicked. Job chapter 9 verse 24 states that the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Did he not just cover up the face of the Son of God and put up his image of his own face? See? Okay. Now, Gabal, Ammon, Ammon are the Japanese. Amalek, right? Uh, Psalms 83. Verse 5, let's start over. For they have consented together with one consent.
they formed a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom, the Edomites, and the Ishmaelites, and Moab, right? The Chinese, Ishmaelites of the Arabs, right? Which means mixed people, okay? The Hagarites, which are the Egyptians, Gabal, Ammon, which are uh, the Japanese, and Amalek, which owns the, call themselves from the tribe of Judah and are not, but do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan because Israelites don't attend synagogues. There's only one people that attend synagogues, and that's these people right here. See? The frauds. Okay, see in there? You can freeze frame that, that bill and zoom in if you want to. Okay, I'll move it up a little bit so it's just where you can see. Yep. Hold on. Zoom in. Stop the video, zoom in, no problem. Okay. Those are the individuals that call themselves uh, from the tribe of Judah and are not, but do lie and attend synagogues. They got their little swirlies on the side of their face. You know, okay, wear a hat. That hat is a representation of they worship Satan, Saturnalia, right? Where they hump a wall like that, okay? And they have oral circumcision, where they circumcise a baby in uh, 10 days, right? With their mouth. Ew! Okay? That's a part of their law. Oral circumcision? Oh, man. Come on now. That's too much. But they are the wicked. Okay? And this is what they don't teach you at church. In a building. Where you think a building is going to save you. The most high God's power cannot be put in something as small as a goddamn matchbox. You cannot make a temple for him. Okay, how are you going to do that when the earth, the clouds of, of, of the earth are, uh, are on the soles of his feet and the earth is his footstool? So how are you going to make a, a, a building that houses the Lord? Explain that shit. Okay, see, and this is what they don't tell you at church. They don't put things together to make sense. Okay, they just want you to believe a blind, a blind leading the blind. What did Yahweh Shah and Mashiach say? Did he not say that they would both fall into a ditch? You have a blind pastor that does not teach the truth. And you have a, a blind following of Christians that don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. They're going to both fall into a ditch. They're going to be left here and melted. Because they don't know the true name of the Father and the true name of the Son. They call upon these names that they were given by their forefathers when they stole this land and enslaved the indigenous population of the people and the Israelites. The adoption is for the Israelites. The glory is for the Israelites. The giving of the law was given to the Israelites. Israelites consist of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That much is clear. But the Edomites tell you that everybody else can be saved, but the Israelites. Okay? Now you tell me if this bastard Esau Edom is not the devil the Bible speaks of. Right? John chapter 8 verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay, and when Yahweh Mashiach told them about this, they sought to push him off a cliff. When Stephen, the apostle Stephen, told them the same thing, they stoned him to death because he cut to the heart. Right? Let's go over here to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. Right? Hebrews uh, 
Uh, four and twelve. So like. Here it is, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of Yahweh is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Right? And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Right? Okay. Well then, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we all must stand before... Okay, let's, let's go get it before I turn it up. Let's get it. 2, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that each one may receive of the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Right? Hebrews 5 and 8. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Right? What is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It gives the Israelites hope that the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, will come and save us once again. Because these devils have it in for us to put us in these FEMA camps to have us exterminated. Because we're waking up to where we're the Israelites of the Holy Bible. Nobody can be saved but us. That's the reason why Yahweh Shah Hamashiach died on the tree, so this way his blood will be spread over those Israelites. The hidden ones found in Psalm 83 that will wake up here in these last days to be saved by the Most High God. As is prophesied, the remnant of Zion shall be saved. What is Zion? Zion means memorial of Israel. So there's only going to be a few of us to be saved. Those that know the true Hebrew name of the Father and of the Son. Okay? Because you got to know the true names in order to be saved and get the hell out of here, man. Okay, let's go back over here. Like I said before, I said I was going to go to, uh, what was it, Psalms 91. Right, Psalm 91. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right? Now, what is the secret place of the Most High? This truth. This truth right here where I'm showing you with all of these pictures of everything. And I got proof. Okay? More proof. Okay? That the Most High God is coming to save the Israelites of the Holy Bible. He ain't coming to save nobody else. You can goddamn forget it. Because when you had an opportunity to do right by the Israelites, you furthered the affliction. You gave them drugs, alcohol, cigarettes. You let them do whatever they want to do under democracy, under the rule of law, under the color of the umbrella of democracy, of do as thou wilt. Right? And you expect to be saved? The Most High God loves one people. Like he said in Amos 3, you only of all the families of the earth have I known. Therefore, I will punish you for your sins and your iniquities. The only people that can commit a sin or have iniquity are Israelites. Everybody else can do whatever the fuck they want to do. And that's what we try to tell you. Okay? They can go and smoke cigarettes. They can eat crab, shrimp, pork, lobster. They can eat that shit all day long. The people that are, are, are supposed to be God's chosen people full of discipline with a righteous law approved by all are Israelites because the law was given to the Israelites. The adoption to be adopted back into the family of Israel belonged to Israelites. That adoption pertains to the uncircumcised, those scattered, like it says in John chapter 7, verse 35. Where will he go? Will he go amongst the dispersed 
among the Gentiles, the Israelites scattered among the Gentiles. Okay. And that's where Paul went. That's where Barnabas went. That was their job, was to go amongst those that were uncircumcised. In order to be circumcised, you have to be brought up in the law, statutes, and commandments, and the customs of Israelite, of Israel. <clears throat> okay, such as the scribes and the Pharisees of that day, Paul. Okay, Paul was not a Christian. Okay, Paul, the apostle, was not a Christian. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. A Hebrew of Hebrews. Whose father was a Hebrew. And a scribe and Pharisee. And taught his son Paul, the apostle, a scribe and Pharisee. Didn't have a goddamn thing to do with Christianity. There's only two references in this book that pertain to Christianity. Two out of the entire Bible. And they're mentioned in one sentence. Ha ha! What kind of shit is that? And they built an entire religion around it. You have billions of people that believe that they're going to be saved when they're going to be left here and melted. Like it says in Ezekiel 22 and 18. Because they can't repent. What are they going to repent from? The Most High God looks at them as heathens and Gentiles. They are outside of the covenant and the giving of the law and the services of Yahweh that was given to the Levite priests. Okay? Nothing's changed. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. I am the Lord thy God. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay? Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Most High God made a promise to the, our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that there would always be a man on the, on the throne of Israel. There would always be men of Israel. Permanently. The Most High God swore by himself to Abraham face to face. And that promise and covenant passed on to his son Isaac, the son of promise, and through Isaac, it passed on to his son Jacob. Not Esau. Okay, because there was a man approved of all that came out of the land of the Chaldeans of the land of earth by the name of Abraham. And the Most High God loved Abraham and showed Abraham his will. Okay, and then after that, Abraham conceived and had a son by the name of Isaac, which means whose name means laughter. Abraham means the father of many nations. Right? A father of many. Abram, before his name was changed from Abram to Abraham, Abram means father of one. And Abraham didn't have any kids at the time. Okay? So his name had to be changed. Then he had a son at 99 years old. What the hell, man? You know, you shooting out dust. What, what, what the hell? You, you ain't going to have no kids at no hundred years old? Come on now. And sure enough, sure enough, man, come on now. You can't tell me that ain't the providence of the Most High God, man. You're a hundred years old and you having sex at a hundred and you making, and making kids? Come on, man. <laughs> Only Israelites can do that, man. Come on now. You ain't heard no, no other nation can do that but us. And it's biblical. Ooh. See, Esau, you're finished, man. Ain't nothing you can do. Okay? But like I said before, also in addition to that, okay, through his son Isaac, Jacob had the blessing. Esau, in his ignorance, and his hiatus, sold his birthright, right, to his younger brother Jacob, for one morsel of meat, like it says in Hebrews 12 and 16, lest any fornicator, spiritual or physical fornication, right, or any fornicator or profane person as Esau, 
who from one morsel of meat sold his birthright. To put it in, in modern day terms, Esau Edom sold immortality and the kingdom of heaven on earth for the modern day equivalent to a pot roast. Okay, bread, pottage, and lentils boiling over fire. You can take the same bread, pottage, and lentils and put it in a covered pot and put it in an oven. You got the same result. Uh oh. See? He sold it. The birthright and the blessing go together. Okay? And plus, it was already put in the spirit that Jacob was going to receive the blessing and the inheritance, not Esau. Ephraim, the sons of Joseph, was younger than his older brother Manasseh, but Ephraim got the blessing and the leadership of the tribe of Ephraim. Manasseh, which are the Cubans, they just get in there because they're brothers from the same mother, from the same father. What the hell? Okay, see, this is what they don't teach you at church, man. They refuse to teach you the truth. If you knew the truth, you'd quit going to church and study the Bible for yourself. Okay? You would know the truth because it would be in you. They want to put what they want in you. Most of them go to church and preach all of their bullshit of evangelical Christianity for money. Filthy lucre's sake. That's the reason why most of them do it. Look, you got T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer. What is a woman doing in the pulpit? Okay? It is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Okay? A woman should be chastened and chased and cover up her hair and have respect and wisdom and know the difference between right and wrong instead of got their the hair down, makeup, earrings, okay, and got their tits showing. Okay? That's covetousness. They push covetousness on our women and they push it on our men. Okay? They got our women committing adultery like it's going out of style. They're having sex with all kinds of different men. Having different babies with different men all the time. That's what these Edomites push in democracy. Do as thou wilt. That's what it means by definition. What the hell? Okay, but the Edomites, devils, will not tell you the truth, man. They refuse. Okay? They want to get saved. Right? And they want to take you with them into the kingdom of heaven when the kingdom of heaven is for Israelites. The Edomites can't get in. Jacob, as it is written, Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Yeah, you heard it. God hates. Yes, he does. He does not love everybody. You read the book for yourself and you'll find it out. Because he made, he told us to come out, preach the gospel, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. And this long-suffering and doctrine, as we come out here preaching these gospels every day, of not every other day, of every weekend, and we have hands in our life and our freedom to stand up boldly to tell the people the truth. Okay? It's the truth. What the hell? What you want? Magic? There's no magic when it comes to the Most High God. Because the Most High God made a law against that. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Okay? Remember King Saul? He consulted with the necromancer, a soothsayer, right? And conjured up the spirit of Samuel, trying to get the kingdom back. Samuel told him, uh, in a fortnight from that point, you and your son will come and join me in the, in the spiritual realm. So they were fucked to start with. Okay? And sure enough, that's what happened. They had war with the, the Ammonites, I think it was, which are the Japanese, and they got killed. 
Saul and Jonathan. Hell, uh, King David, him and Jonathan were so so tight as brothers, right? And were so cool with one another. King David made a song for Jonathan. He made a song for King Saul. So this way their names would not fall to the earth because they were anointed by Samuel, which was of the tribe of Levi. I think it was, I think it was uh, either Levi or Neftali, it don't matter. But what matters is he was a man of God, ordained by the Holy Spirit at that time to anoint King Saul. Okay, and through that, the next one in line in succession, the king was Jonathan. Okay, but the but Saul disobeyed the law that the Most High God had put down. He disobeyed it. God told him to destroy man, woman, and child, beast, houses, everything. Destroy it all. Don't leave nothing standing. But Saul brought back spoils of war and prisoners, and even brought back the king, king, uh, king uh, or of Amalek. Right, King Agag, the Amalekite, right? Which is, and, and he was a, a, a son or grandson of Amalek, which is the grandson of Esau Edom. You see what I'm saying? So that was a bloodline thing. All this stuff is about bloodlines. It's not about uh, the Gentiles can get in for free. You cannot get into the kingdom of heaven for free. These Edomites think that they're going to get in for free. See, they have no propitiation or covering that was covered for Israelites only. Okay? Edomites can't get in. Okay? That's, that's what they teach at church. Everybody can be saved, which is a lie. Okay? The Most High God sent his son to die for Israel. So this way he could shed his blood. While he was here, he would be a, a righteous teacher and teach the Israelites what to do and what not to do. He took 12 disciples unto himself, each one from a different of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's another thing that they're not telling you. Okay? Wow, man, these people, they, these people are, are buck wild, okay, real, real talk. <laughs> okay, uh, John and James, the sons of Zebedee, <clears throat> okay, that would be the uh, the only uh, exception to the rule. They were from Judah, more likely, like Yahweh was, Peter was, okay, so, you know, he had a conglomeration of, of mixed individuals from different tribes, but it still doesn't change the fact that each one of these individuals went out to teach the uncircumcised went out to teach the circumcised and they didn't want to hear it. The 12 apostles suffered uh, some of the most heinous and wicked deaths that you can imagine. One was boiled in oil, one was drawn in water, most of them were hung from a tree, three of them were decapitated, okay? The rest were crucified. Okay, real talk, man. Okay, so by us haphazarding our lives, we know by standing up for the truth of the Holy Bible that Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the ones that are going to be saved, and everybody else is going to be left here and melted. Okay, these Edomites are scared. They're going to try to kill us. They're going to try to shut us down because they don't want us on the internet spreading the truth of the Holy Gospel of the Holy Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. They don't want us to spread basic instructions to our people. Okay? Because they'll wake up. And if one Israelite wakes up to who he is, the rest are going to follow suit. Okay? And when the rest follow suit, there's only going to be a certain number of those elect that are going to be raised incorruptible and be changed. Okay, because Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 says, some shall be raised to everlasting righteousness and immortality, and the others are going to be 
raised to shame and everlasting contempt. Okay? Those that are going to be raised in everlasting contempt, okay, will be born in the kingdom as the children of the 144,000 and the elect one-third the great multitude. Those that are left here and melted and died because of their own unbelief. So the Most High God is still going to save the whole house of Israel. But he's going to save the elect of the house of Israel first. Even though the Israelites are elect above all nations upon the face of the earth, there is an elect within the elect. And I just stated who they were. 12,000 from each of these 12 tribes, which will be the police force of the entire universe because they will be extraterrestrial. They will have spiritual power granted them from the Most High God when our, their bodies are changed from corruptible to incorruption and from immortal to immortality. Okay? Where the Most High God will put his law, his statutes, and commandments in their inward parts meaning in their mind and in their heart. Okay? And they will never go off again because they will not be subject to the flesh. The flesh will be made immortal. The flesh will be made uh, ecclesiastical in nature. Okay? The flesh will be made in immortal, immortality, incorruptible. It can no longer die. And with the law, statutes, and commandments written in their hearts, they will know what to do and what not to do. It will be natural. They will be judge, jury, and executioner on the spot for any nation that will not keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. If they will not come up to the Feast of Tabernacles, they will be cut off. See? So, anyway... see anyways uh anyway i'm gonna uh i'm gonna go ahead and close up today i think i've been on, on here too long okay malachi okay let's go to daniel before i do okay daniel chapter 12 verse 1 through 3 at that time michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, right? And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. Where is this book written at? Well, let's go over here to Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 Then those who feared the Lord spake, spoke to one another and the Lord listened and heard them so a book of remembrance was written before him for those that fear the Lord and who meditate on his name They shall be mine says the Lord of hosts Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai on the day that I will make them my jewels and I will spare them right as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves the Most High God and the one who does not serve him. Right? New King James Version. Right? Okay, so now you know that there's a book of remembrance with the names of those individuals that have been entrusted with the truth that speak often one another through uh, technological similitudes and uh, I, I forget the other name of it, but, but yeah, uh, and, and put it on mainstream media, right? Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, all oh, I did that, right? Zephaniah chapter 1, Zephaniah, if I can get to it, Man, 
Don't turn the page or start the middle. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. Right? The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. Jacob's trouble, a.k.a. the great tribulation, right? A day of devastation and desolation, right? Our people will be desolate, like it says in uh, 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 73. Then shall ye know who are my chosen, because they shall be cast out of their houses. They shall be trodden underfoot. Right? Like it says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. For behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now, if the devil is a spiritual individual, how does he own prison? That's what they're not telling you. The living representation of Satan on earth is Esau, even the so-called white man. The devil the Bible speaks of. Okay? He's the only one that owns prisons to put you in it. I just told you about the King Albert plan and the Verse 84 plan, what they plan to do to you in the time of civil unrest. They're trying to manufacture a reason to create the civil unrest. It's called the Hegelian dialectic. Pressure from above and pressure from below. They create the problem and then bring the solution. They'll cut your water off They'll cut your electricity off. They'll cut your food source off and then bring the solution. That's the plan. Okay? A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of trumpet and alarm. What trumpet and alarm? When these clouds grow dark and there's a, a the possibility of a tornado, you hear an alarm go off. If it's a, uh, a, for a hurricane, or a typhoon, or a monsoon, the uh, alarm go off. Everybody knows it. Everybody going straight to the basement. Right? Right? A day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. Right? I will bring distress among men and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like refuse. What's refuse? Deprecation. Human feces. S-H-I-T. In a toilet bowl that you flush. Okay? Let's see if I can go back here. Is that right? Obadiah 1 and 7. All the men in your confederacy shall force you to the border. The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Right? That's in reference to the Edomite devils and their confederacy of all these nations that I said at the beginning of the video. Greece, Italy, Spain, France, West Germany, United Kingdom, Portugal, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Canada, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Turkey, okay, Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. That's the beast power. They're going to be confederate against America, the United States, or should I say divided states of bitterness, okay? Right? Let's see if I can get to uh, Nahum. Oh, try to get Nahum chapter three, verse nineteen. Right, your injury has no healing. Your wound is severe. Who are they talking about? 
Babylon the Great, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. Right? All who hears news of you will clap their hands over you, for upon whom has not your wickedness passed continually? Right? Democracy. Wickedness. But anyway, uh, I, I had a long list to go down, boy, but uh, my telephone about to run out of juice. So I'm going to just go ahead and end the video there. All the praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rekabudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for pushing 100% truth, for teaching me this truth that rule well, and peace and salutations to the hopeful left. Shalom. Alrighty. Shit. Shalakia.